The eminent historian Michael Lacona states that we have, quote, as much evidence of the resurrection, if not more, than we have of Julius Caesar's crossing the Rubicon in 49 BC. And no one doubts that. Now, like I said, I don't have time to unpack all of that right now, but based on the historical method, and that's the same historical method that historians have used to learn uh, the truth about people like Julius Caesar, uh, Alexander the Great, um, and George Washington, and Abraham Lincoln. That same historical method has been used to know some true things about the historical person known as Jesus of Nazareth. The eminent historian, Michael Lacona, states that we have, quote, as much evidence of the resurrection, if not more, than we have of Julius Caesar's crossing the Rubicon in 49 BC. And no one doubts that. But he says we have more evidence for the resurrection, not just the life and death of Jesus. No, much more of the resurrection, that Jesus was killed and then he was alive again. Just using the historical method, we can come to that conclusion. Now, Lacona notes that even the harshest skeptical and atheistic historians admit several things as historical fact about Jesus. For example, number one, Jesus existed. Two, Jesus died by crucifixion. Three, Jesus' disciples really believed that Jesus rose from the dead and appeared to them. Now, of course, the atheist historians are, are not going to say that Jesus really did uh, rise from the dead. They're going to reject that. But they will admit some things. They will say, look, these disciples who were scared to death and hiding and were cowards were then suddenly transformed into people who really did think that Jesus rose from the dead and they were willing to die for it. That should get our attention. Also, they'll admit the following. The church persecutor and Christian hunter, Saul, was radically transformed into the Jesus preaching Paul, and he was willing to die for this message. Look, this guy, they'll say, was the guy that was hunting Christians down because of the message they were preaching, and he was torturing them and even sometimes having them killed. And then all of a sudden, something happened. Who knows? But Paul decides to join the persecuted. It says, uh, yeah, I now agree with them, and I'm willing to die for it too. In fact, he was killed for, for that message. That should get our attention. The skeptic James was suddenly changed into somebody who was willing to die for the gospel. And finally, the tomb of Jesus was found empty by his women followers. Now look, these are uh, facts that are accepted by the vast majority of historians even non-Christian and atheist historians. The vast majority will affirm these facts. Now, in Lacona's book, it's just a little book. Um, I recommend It's actually an easy read. It's a, it's a fun read. It's long, but it's a good read. It's called the, the Resurrection of Jesus, A New Historiographical Approach. Highly recommend it. In his book... Uh, he demonstrates that the resurrection hypothesis accounts for all of these facts together, while no other scientific or naturalistic hypothesis or explanation uh, offered over the past 2,000 years can account for all of these facts together. So uh, it's called an abductive inference, the inference to the best explanation of the facts is the hypothesis, which makes sense of all of them together. And after 2,000 years, the resurrection hypothesis is the only one that can do that. 